Yeah. What would you say is the hardest character you had to animate? What was the hardest character that I've had to animate? Um, I guess I guess it would be. Well, Tarzan was incredibly difficult, but I was so jazzed by it that it overcame the difficulties. Um, I'd say Pocahontas was was really difficult because it took an enormous amount of control and and study of subtleties, and um, it was in the subtleties that that character really. Um, I don't know that that made me afraid that we weren't going to be able to do that. Like, if I could figure it out, it was one thing. But then, how was I going to communicate it to everybody else? And you have to come up with simple systems to explain it. Like the fact that uh, Pocahontas the fact that Pocahontas was a very different kind of a facial design um, now, okay so here's Ariel and I was trying to do something very different than than that we were we were trying to do something that instead of based, uh, let me do it from the front on. Instead of that kind of a face, which is very classic Disney kind of, Freddie Moore kind of design. Pardon me. <laughs> Thank you. Pretty no, much. I think it's Freddie Moore that did that. Um, so anyway, so so if Ariel's like that, <clears throat> Pocahontas was not based on a Caucasian face. It was a high cheekbone, and that was going to change the whole design. And the way I communicated it was by talking about. Uh, Superman's shield. Um, you know, Superman has got this. Actually, it sits up a little higher than that, even. Dun, 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 dun. Superman shield. <laughs> Something like that. I said, so we are basing our our new heroine on Superman's shield where those cheekbones are coming out as opposed to aerials which are going in. I mean, it's a very, it's an exact opposite. And these cheekbones set up the eyes, that they're pushing up those cheekbones. Her brows are not these big arcing ones like that. They're, they're straighter, more serious. Her, her nostrils, her nose doesn't turn up, points down. And, and as I was doing it, I, it was just, I was seeing how this new design really had a lot of wonderful ideas with, you know, this, this pointing down here, letting the lips be kind of a reflection of that. Instead of this, they're, they're going up instead of that. They're doing that. And I mean that's that's kind of an ugly looking <laughs> Pocahontas actually, but it does sell the idea. Let me uh she looks like my wife. <laughs> I, I don't know why I picked to do the hardest character in front of a whole bunch of people. <laughs> people. Now I know it's <laughs>
Who asked this question? <laughs> it's so much of it is about proportion. You see the difference? This, just pulling that lip up a little tighter to that nose, and the nose just a little closer to these eyes, starts to make the whole thing work. I keep, Rapunzel had the same kind of a swoop except it went down like that. Now, I keep wanting to do that with Pocahontas and it doesn't work. Once again, a ton of hair. It's shameless, isn't it? I found myself, anytime we'd go to dinner around here in LA, I was constantly drawing any of the, the girls, Hispanic girls or Asian girls. Uh, they all had qualities of that face that, of Pocahontas everywhere I went. I, I, saw, I saw her. Okay, so that's Pocahontas. Okay. Let, me, let me do one last really quick little uh, drawing of the beast. <laughs> so beast. All right. He's he's a blend of a whole bunch of different animals. We have this buffalo-like head, which is hanging in our living room at home. It used to be in the garage to my wife finally realize, okay, it's not going away. <laughs> gorilla, gorilla brow, this crest of a gorilla's head is really all for attaching muscles up really high for eating bamboo. So you get enormous force coming off here. The, uh, the brow, I mean the uh, muzzle was, was from a wild boar. Also we had a wild boar head in the office with these great tusks that came up. The beard was a buffalo beard. The, uh, the mane was the mane of a lion sitting around there like that. The horns were a, <clears throat> a combination of a variety of different animals. I really liked the curves and straights and twists to it all. And then at a certain point, I think, well, I don't know, maybe he's going to get too scary. Nobody's going to really believe that Belle could fall in love. I've got to soften him, or she's never going to fall in love with him. I'll give him cow ears. That makes him a little friendly. <laughs> <laughs> and, uh, but his eyes are the eyes of a prince trapped inside. And it, it came together about as fast as, I, it took about six months of drawing and drawing and drawing, but then it all just sort of fell together and there's this amazing thing that happens. For me, I did hundreds of drawings of different beasts, but I knew that that wasn't him until this one. And then as soon as I looked, I was like, that's him, there he is. And so I've got this weird belief that these characters exist before you drew them. That they're already there, and you just gotta do the research and just put as much of your heart into it as possible, and one day they're just gonna pop, poke their head through and say, here I am. And it's happened with Pocahontas, it happened with Tarzan, it happened with the Beast, and with all of these characters. So, anyway, thank you so much for listening.